So it's my great pleasure uh, to introduce Colleen Molly and John Vincent, who are our speakers for this evening. So thank you very much to both of you for joining us. Um, sometimes it's interesting to know why a topic is picked. Um, so Amina, who's one of our committee um, members, runs the Kitty Wake Multilingual Library in Newcastle. And when she shared with us that they've um, been awarded the Libraries of Sanctuary Award, we went, that's really cool. But what is this award? We don't know about it. How about we get someone along to one of our events to talk? So it's we are so excited. Um, I met with Colleen um, a few weeks ago, who's based in Leicester, and I lived in Leicester before I came to the North East. So that was an additional just had a tick on the box. Um, Colleen is the City Sanctuary Communications Manager. And John is the author of the Libraries of Sanctuary Resource Pack. Um, and coordinates the network, which is advocates for social justice. Um, so that's just a little, a little introduction to themselves. They will um, give us a little talk, which they shall divvy up between themselves. And then afterwards, there'll be plenty of opportunity for um, asking questions. So as we go through, if you do have any questions that spring to mind, do pop them in the chat window. Because if you're anything like me, sometimes I forget at the end when someone says, have you got questions? And then you think, well, I did do, but I can't remember. So because Beth is managing our chat this evening, um, she'll keep an eye on that. Um, I know that John will need to leave us fairly promptly because his wife is teaching an evening class and their internet won't cope with them both being around. So do make the most of John um, while he's here. Um, so over to Colleen and John to, to share with us. Thank you very much, Susie. Um, I'm going to really whip through very fast because I'm going to give you a background to City of Sanctuary and then invite John to tell us more about his direct work with libraries and libraries of sanctuary and the um, amazing case studies that he came across in, in his research for the libraries of sanctuary award pack. And because he's got to go, I'm going to whiz through. So forgive me if I speak too fast. Um, Obviously, our vision is about a, a culture of welcome for refugees and people seeking asylum. So I'm ready for the next slide, please, Susie. Thank you. Um, just a quick um, explanation of who we are. We're a very small charity. All the staff are part time, some short, smaller, seven hours a week. Um, but we support this wide network of over 120 grassroots groups, some of whom are uh, charities in themselves and our key aim is to develop this much wider movement which is much bigger than ourselves and is made up of the refugee support sector and beyond um, to really develop that that movement which welcomes people seeking sanctuary i'm ready for the next slide um, uh, that map's actually not up to date, uh, been working on that, um, but just to show how widespread we are, and we have actually spread as far as the south of, um, of Ireland, um, but not only are we made up of local groups, but also of awarded organisations, which I'll go into in a moment, um, which include schools, universities, theatres, um, we've got a sports club, we've got a cafe, um, all sorts of mainstream organisations are joining that network. Ready for the next one, Susie. Um, and obviously in supporting that network and building that culture of welcome and trying to influence change for a much more positive and progressive asylum process. Um, this is our theory of change and if you go onto our website, you can you can read that um, flyer a little bit more carefully. But basically, it's based on contact theory. If we can build relationships of solidarity between local people and people seeking asylum, um, that is the best way to break down fear and prejudice. And we've got some lovely examples of inviting a UKIP counsellor to a dinner and putting an asylum seeker on either side of him. And by the end of the meal, he'd actually shifted hugely in his perception and understanding. Um, and that was just sharing a meal. So you can imagine, um, you know, how much more we develop when you engage people in through um, things that resonate with them, through music, through football, through um, all sorts of things. 
And this book, 100,000 Welcomes, which somebody, which the Anne's put into the chat, um, and you can find on our website, we've got it available as an ebook or a book, book in print, actually tells all those stories, beautiful stories of welcome. Um, and, and how, you know, a few people just meeting people seeking sanctuary, really filling that gap in terms of connecting with people as opposed to just providing services um, has led to this transformational movement called the Movement for Welcome, of which City of Sanctuary is just a part. Sanctuary Awards I'm going to talk about in a moment, um, but you can obviously imagine that as you meet people seeking sanctuary, so you might actually want to be more of an advocate when you discover what a difficult time they have, how easily they can be thrown into detention or made destitute um, by the system. So I'm ready for the next slide, please. Um, our work is built um, on these values, you know, participation and inclusiveness for everybody, not just people who have joined the City of Sanctuary Network or have become members of our organisation, but much more widely than that. And um, we're really about working with people seeking sanctuary rather than for. So that participation and inclusion is so vital um, because we're we wish to promote their voices and, and not advocate just on behalf. Um, Inspiration is a strange name for a value, but really it's about inspiring others to engage and, and wanting to be more welcoming. So a lot of our work is about sharing good practice and, and sharing that inspiration because there is some incredibly inspiring work happening. So I'm ready to move on. Sorry, I am whipping through this. I want to give John a chance to come in <laughs> before he has to go. Um, so we provide resources and networking opportunities, um, both to our groups and organisations. Um, but Sanctuary Streams and Sanctuary Awards, we'll go on to the next slide, you know, because our aim for this is engaging the mainstream. So it isn't just working with people who are already in refugee support organisations, but it's a working across arts, health, even gardens, community gardens, um, colleges and universities. And uh, we have hundreds of schools that have become schools of sanctuary. And um, we're now just about to launch our Shops of Sanctuary stream of work, having done a pilot project with Oxfam shops in the Yorkshire area. Um, so libraries are just part of that. And uh, we have a leaflet here, um, libraries and museums of sanctuary, you know, which um, you can order from us and share, which has just got some lovely examples of good practice in both libraries and um, museums. I think we can move on to the next slide and I'm just going to very quickly um, give you um, a bit of a background to our Sanctuary Award. It's this beautiful tool which celebrates good practice and recognises where it's happening and, and engages mainstream commitments to that vision of welcome. So if you can go on to the next slide and I'll talk about these three key processes, learn, embed, share. They're so simple, but they're so beautiful because they're incredibly powerful. If an organisation learns what it means to be seeking sanctuary and not only learns for themselves and the staff, but for their customers and the people who attend that organisation and then embed that learning, embed good practice in welcome um, in a way that it isn't reliant on the one sanctuary champion in that library or the one sanctuary champion in that school who might then leave, but it's embedded in their policies and procedures. Um, and then they share their good practice with similar organisations. And you can imagine that kind of knock on almost exponential effect um, in terms of, you know, one library maybe encouraging and supporting other libraries to also learn and embed and share that good practice. I'm ready for the next slide. Lots of resources um, for the different streams of work. Um, John, thankfully we had John um, Vincent, who I'm going to introduce in a moment, um, designed, uh, um, did all the research and the legwork and um, collecting the case studies for our Libraries of Sanctuary resource pack, which we highly recommend. It's available free to download as a PDF from the website. 
And as we emerge from lockdown, we will be printing um, printed copies of that to send out to people. Um, the next slide, I'm wondering. Ah, so, so thank you. You've actually um, clicked on that. Uh, that's our website, uh, which I think, Susie, you've just gone on to. Um, and I'll let John take you around that website in a moment. Um, and just quickly say on the next slide, um, the awards don't just belong to City of Sanctuary, so we do engage other refugee support organisations. So we've been able to provide awards to organisations where we don't have City of Sanctuary groups. Um, and but, but in general, the assessment is led by us, um, always with a person seeking sanctuary as part of the um, appraisal panel. And um, I won't spend too long on that because I think, given time, I'd like to bring John in. If that's OK, Susie, we're going to skip a couple of slides, including the presentation to Kitty Wake Multilingual Library, which I think I can do after... Um, after John has to go, because I I don't want to eat any, in, any more on his time. So welcome, John, to tell us more about the libraries of sanctuary side of things. Thanks, Colleen. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I'll start with an apology. I'm really sorry. I'm just kind of running past you, more or less. Um, and I'm sorry. I, I Susie and I've never met. Um, I have to say, um, and I'm saying this very gently, um, it's actually not my wife, it's my boyfriend, um, oh, who's, sorry. that's all right. Um, Liv living in the countryside, as some of you may know, is uh, <laughs> supposedly idyllic, but it's not terribly idyllic when it comes to things like broadband. So we can't actually both do things at once. Uh, he teaches an evening class. Us. So I'm about to bow out so he can take over. Um, yeah, the Libraries of Sanctuary Resource Pack was published last May. Um, it grew out of some work that had been carried out in libraries in the West Midlands. Um, some of you will know that Thimble Mill Library in Sandwell was the UK's first Library of Sanctuary. Uh, the West Midlands Libraries connected group has been working after that to develop a, a, a UK wide approach to public libraries particularly and now widening out to other kinds of libraries becoming um, involved in the sanctuary movement um, and fol following the work in the West Midlands uh, we developed the Libraries of Sanctuary Resource Pack with enormous help from a huge team of people so it wasn't just the the library people, Colleen and people from Cities of Sanctuary were involved, the Arts Council were involved, Libraries Connected were involved, and it was a, a kind of joint effort uh, to produce the resource pack. You've got some illustrations from it on screen, and again, um, I was immensely grateful to people across libraries in the UK who sent in amazing case studies and some brilliant photographs just showing some of the community events that have gone on in their libraries. Since the pack was published, uh, we've had a number of other um, library services or individual libraries that have become libraries of sanctuary, which is brilliant. And we know that there's a number more in the pipeline. Um, everything's been a bit delayed or um, put aside because of the pandemic, but things are still moving on. The resource pack has, as Colleen said, got some terrific case studies. I think probably for me, the most significant bit of it all is the very simple things that libraries can do to provide a welcome. So you'll all know, you go to somewhere that you don't know very well, and you look around for something that shows you that it's a place where you can belong. Or, it, or you look for somebody who's rather like you. Um, and I, I purposely did the bit in my introduction because I'm going to build on it briefly here. So um, as a man who identifies as queer, when I go into new buildings, libraries, whatever it is I go into, I kind of look to see, am I reflected in here? Is there something that makes me feel like I'm welcome? So often there isn't. And it's that kind of feeling suddenly that I'm somewhere that isn't really my space that I carry with me a lot of the time. And I empathise entirely with people seeking sanctuary, arriving somewhere and finding places that they don't understand how they work. They don't know 
what all the signs mean. They don't know whether they're allowed to use it. They don't know if they have to pay. They don't know whether there's anybody who's going to be friendly. Where they fled from may have been somewhere where any anybody with any kind of power or authority is someone to be frightened of. All those factors are built in. So what libraries have been doing and do brilliantly is provide something that indicates a welcome and the um, pictures around um, the illustration of the pack itself just show some of the events and activities that libraries have run that make that welcome visible. It might be something as simple as having a welcome sign in different languages. It might be having the City of Sanctuary welcome sign. There may be something that a library can do that that just gives that that welcome as you you go through the doors. Thimble Mill Library um, has got a range of activities and they're in the pack, a whole lot of the work that they do. Um, and again, you can see on their website um, just some of the things that they've been act actually actively doing to, to bring people from the community in. I think this is a vital time for us to be doing this um, and I'm going to add one grim note to my presentation because I think it's really important. Um, I've run training courses, that's, that's what the network does primarily, um, so I've run training courses, have done for the last 20 years or so. One of the things that interests me is how far people in libraries are aware of some of the bigger things that are going on around us and I'm sure all of you are as you're here but I'm um, concerned I suppose is the best word when I talk to library people who've never heard um, of the hostile environment and the fact that the UK has purposely engendered one to make people feel that they're not welcome and we look at for example what's happened to people called the Windrush generation. So people who came here entirely legitimately, who suddenly aren't welcome, who can't, who go abroad and then can't get back. The sorts of issues that that throws up, the sorts of unwelcome that people feel is something that libraries are really well placed to deal with, to grapple with, to counter. And the work that Libraries of Sanctuary have been doing over the last four years since Thimble Mill um, was crowned, so to speak, um, show just how that welcome and how that that embedding that in the community, how that is so effective and is so welcoming to people who otherwise might feel that they're not welcome here, nobody wants them. And libraries can be one of the vehicles that show that they are welcome and they're needed and can get support and can actually be signposted to other services which libraries do so well. Sorry, I am gabbling now because I've only got a couple of minutes before I need to run, but I might stop and let you carry on. And if I'm if I have gone, um, it's brilliant magic, um, and I look forward to visiting the northeast to come and visit you. That would be great, John. Thank you, John. Thank you. And just just to sort of pick up on um, Thimble Mill Library, it's in um, the Sandwell Borough um, in the West Midlands, just sort of as part of the bigger sort of Birmingham conurbation. So although we have a Birmingham City of Sanctuary Group, we don't have a Sandwell Borough of Sanctuary Group. At least we didn't when Thimble Mill Library um, applied for its award. And since then, you know, Sandwell Borough itself in the City Council wanted all of their libraries to become libraries of sanctuary and we now have a Sandwell Borough of Sanctuary but that didn't exist before Thimbleville Library of Sanctuary so I think that's another example of sort of the theory of change you know you get one organisation you know signing up to that vision and then you know the whole borough starts to sign up to that vision and, and thank you John for introducing the hostile environment I, I practice very hard being positive in in what is an extremely hostile environment. And I think uh, tomorrow the government will be coming out with um, their new um, plans to fix the broken asylum system, which will actually make it even more repressive and yeah. more damaging for people who flee persecution and, and war and violence to come here to seek our protection. Um, it, it looks like it's much worse under this government and and so the importance of building that counter narrative that welcoming 
environment and, and actually standing up to very regressive, very damaging and very harmful policies, um, it, it's more important than ever, really. John, do you want a last word before you have to go? I'd hardly dare. Sorry, once I start talking, you've just heard me. I, I kind of gabble for life then. Um, now, only that I'm really sorry. I can't stay with you any longer. It's been brilliant. And I look forward to um, being in touch, coming to the northeast, visiting you and seeing some of the work on the ground. Um, I ran a training course in Newcastle just a about a year ago, just before lockdown one, um, and met quite a lot of you then. So I'm hoping that um, I'll be able to revisit. Um, I'll put my email address in the chat. And then if anybody really does want to pick anything up with me or talk to me more or anything, please feel free. Uh, and I'm embarrassed now, but I really am going to run. Thank you very much. We really appreciate you popping in to see us, John. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, John, and he most, is most certainly worth contacting um, as he has spent so many years building sort of social inclusion in public spaces like, like libraries. Um, and, and he's such an experienced um, and inspiring person. Um, and also, I think, a member of SILIP, aren't you, John? You can just wave because I know you've got to go. So I, I was I muted myself briefly. Um, I remember I because I knew the time was tight. I didn't really do anything about my background, um, and I won't now because there isn't time. Um, I've been in I've been around in libraries for hundreds of years, or yeah. so it feels. Uh, I'm a member of SILIP, uh, the network I coordinate, and I put the uh, web address uh, in the chat a bit earlier. Um, has been going for 22 years. It's primarily public libraries with one or two universities. If anyone's interested, I'm about to put my email address up, so do get in touch. And I really am going now, otherwise I should be in trouble. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. And also, I think John was behind the Welcome to My Library project, which was uh, a number of years ago, but those resources are still available and we connect you to those resources both on our website and in our resource pack. Um, you know, so in, in many ways, he was the sort of uh, original welcome to my library's man, let us say. So, Susie, I wouldn't mind if you went back to the slides where we jumped from before that um, here, uh, back back to the coordination of the, yeah, that one. That'll do, that'll do. Um, uh, just to sort of say that although we keep our awards um, you know, we have that quite clear uh, criteria, minimum criteria for libraries to meet. We're not like Ofsted or um, uh, kite marked, you know, Q mark um, organisations. We don't exist as an awarding body. We exist as a body that's building that movement for, for welcome, you know, so our award is very much celebratory and, you know, we don't come in and inspect at all, um, but it is about building a relationship with your organization and you know the rest of the the wider welcoming network um and and just to make that other point you know so there's an example of thimble mill library actually now we have sandwell borough of library and more and more people across that borough um being drawn into that welcoming environment instead of being um <clears throat> you know, perhaps tempted by the hostile environment, you know, and the, the growth of the um, more ugly far right messaging that that's happening out there more than ever before, I think. Um, but it's about that sort of um, going back to our theory of change and the sort of the, the networking. Um, I've lost my point. I think we need to move on to the next slide. I'm so sorry. <laughs> If it comes back to me, um, yeah, you know, so um, we do have Newcastle is a um, has joined the local authority network and, you know, is part of a wider network of local authorities that have signed up to be cities of sanctuary. But you may be working for a library that's in a local authority that hasn't signed up. So which is why I've just thrown that slide in there to 
um, let people know that we also, you know, one of our other big streams of work is working across local authorities and, and we've got a meeting next week on no recourse to public funding with local authorities. We've already got over 60 people signed up for, for that event. Um, and if you're working for a library that isn't a public library, although our resource pack is is more focused on public libraries if you're a school library or a university library this is even more important because it may be that as a school library becoming a school library of sanctuary you can encourage your whole school to be want to becoming a school of sanctuary or the whole university clearly a university of sanctuary is a much um bigger you know the award <laughs> reflects the profile and size and complexity of the organization a mother and toddler group could get an award for sanctuary, but clearly they wouldn't have to do quite the same as a university might or, or, or a, um, a more complex organisation. So the next slide, because when Kitty Wake was awarded the Library of Sanctuary Award, it was during lockdown or we were just going into our second major lockdown and there was nowhere public to celebrate this award and to hand over. So although I can't physically hand over this certificate, which would normally be in um, in a nice frame and go along with a big speech, I'm not going to make too big a speech because we've only got 10 minutes left. Um, but we're very impressed with Kitty Wake, not just, um, you know, it's existing as a multilingual library and therefore be welcoming um, to non-English speakers. Um, but how much they work with people seeking sanctuary and how involved they are in the functioning of that library. So I would just like to say congratulations and maybe everybody would like to clap with me and give some sort of applaud to Kitty Wake Library for the 2022 uh, work. And I'd like to invite Amina just to say a few words about about the work of Kitty Wake. Amina. I just want to say thank you and I want to give you Jola to actually say the thank you. Thank you. Please. Jola. Hi everyone. Thanks Amina. Uh, I'm Jola. I'm a volunteer here. Um, I can't type in the, the chat for some reason, so I couldn't introduce myself. Um, I'm a volunteer and also a trustee at the library. Um, first of all, I would like to thank our volunteers, members, trustees, and also Amina, whose vis vision made this all possible. Um, I'd also like to thank the City of Sanctuary for their support and also making us the first library of sanctuary in the Northeast. Um, we also we're grateful to all the groups that have used our spaces to promote inclusivity, education, art, language growth, and laughter. You birth stronger community connections and are truly a massive benefit to Newcastle and to the Northeast and the UK as a whole. Um, our library um, has been basically has volunteers from all around the world and members from all around the world with diverse cultures and experiences. At present we have over a thousand members and over a hundred uh, over a hundred languages with varying subjects and topics. Um, I came to the library attracted by the paper cranes outside, the music and also to the shelves of limitless knowledge. I had grown through, gone through ill health, grief, battles with the home office, pos possibility of losing my community and friends, and also just my, my personal safety. Um, I was in a lot of pain on that day, and it felt like the doors were calling to me um, and drawing me forward. The first step and many more that I took have established my roots in the Northeast. I have laughed, I have danced, cried, and learned the power of li the little steps. I currently um, 
are, I am currently a trustee on the board and I hope to continue as one. At present, I don't have to worry about the Home Office, at least not for another year and eight months until my visa is renewed. And I've loved every moment of me working at the library. Unfortunately for most, they have struggled and lost. And that's why it's important to have an informal group where people could come, play games, speak casually whilst practicing the English. It was a group where people supported each other um, and they understood each other, even if they were forced to back to distant shores. We chaired on each other, um, hoping for safety and worrying when we heard nothing. Creation of spaces like ours play an essential role in our communities, allowing for freedom of thought, expression, education, creation of community, support and rest. Our library is not just a place where you can come and borrow books. It's a place where you can, we can be ourselves and have respite from all of our struggles and build bridges to a better world. Sadly, spaces like ours have struggled and some have shut down across the UK, mainly because of lack of funds, COVID uh, being devalued, and also from the hostile environment policy from the government. Fortunately for us, we're still here and we cannot wait to welcome back our volunteers, our members and visitors once we are allowed to do so. As I've mentioned before, we all are very existence to the diverse expertise of our amazing volunteers who, who, whose work has carried us along. Once again, I'd like to thank them for their hard work, their creativity, and for staying with us even when some volunteers physically cannot be present. Even when going through such a traumatic immigration system, Thank you all so much. Without you, we'd have we'd be a space and not a home to our countless wanderers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jola. Um, I'm blown about way about some of the things that you've shared with us and uh, all the amazing work at Kitty Wake. Um, uh, just just to remind our, the rest of our audience that people who are seeking sanctuary are actually not allowed to work. They're not allowed to get paid work. They are expected to live on £36 a week, um, sometimes for years on end. Um, it's a very, very long time to be in limbo. So the opportunity for volunteering, I think, um, is so important for people keeping people connected for keeping well-being and and ensuring that people are not sort of isolated um, in what some can sometimes be an incredibly long and painful process and thank you Jola for everything that you do um, uh, one of the things that I we often say in City of Sanctuary particularly when we're talking to people who still have fear and prejudices is that people seeking sanctuary bring so many gifts with them, um, you know, and the gift that you have given to Kitty Wake, you know, with your time and your expertise um, has been so important for the, the vitality of that, that organisation. I think we're kind of running out of time now, so I am open for questions and I'm sure Jola and Amina would answer questions too. I would also just like to chip in and remind people that as the first library of sanctuary in the northeast, we are now seeking sanctuary ourselves because we've been given notice to quit where we are and we're at least 80 percent packed up. Uh, we do have a extension to the end of April, but then we've got to be gone and um, reinstalled somewhere else and open. <laughs> Yes, yeah. Library of Sanctuary Seek Sanctuary. Thank you very much. Sorry, my 
my internet dropped out. I will. What, what's the recording after? Lil, if you're happy to stay on a bit for questions, we can have questions. But if anyone else does need to leave, because I know we're at tea time, so you might have um, people in your household to feed. If you do need to leave um, beforehand, then that's fine. But we will keep the recording going for the Q&A. So if you do need to bow out, that's absolutely fine. Um, and you can watch uh, back the rec recording at a later point. So I shall hand over to Beth, who's been monitoring our chat, and she will read out some of the questions we've had there, and then um, you can answer those um, as appropriate. Over to you, Beth. Okay, so we have had some questions. Um, firstly, how do you find that people hear about your work? How's, how, what's the most, how, where do people tend to come from? Um, from the communications? Oh gosh, uh, what a big question. All everywhere and all sorts. People usually people hear by word of mouth or they might read about us um, or they might find us on, on Google, you know. Um, um, and and you know people people start looking at, at in 2015 when the very tragic picture of the Syrian toddler was went sort of global, um, lying dead on the beach. We had something like 5,000 hits a day on our website. You know, people were just wanting to reach out, wanting to find an organisation that, that they could join. Um, and, uh, but, but, but it isn't just huge, you know, tragedies like that. I mean, pe people discover us in all sorts of ways, including through some of the more celebrated work that our local groups do. So organising um, parties on the park or um, feasts from Syria um, or sharing, um, you know, just um, all sorts. But but a key thing to take away for people, particularly if you have to go, um, is uh, cityofsanctuary.org. You know, so much is on our website. It's full of resources. Um, you look at the top menu, you go to streams and activities, and that will take you to libraries of sanctuary on the left hand column. Um, or if you click on resources, you'll see that you, you can go straight to the resources page for libraries of sanctuary. Um, or you could go straight to the awards section. Um, look at our about section and you will see our um, principles which actually underpin our awards and underpin the awards criteria. You know, they're interpreted within the context of whatever the organisation is. Um, I won't go on, I'm bambling, burbling now. Any other questions? Yeah, sort of following on a little bit from that, um, have there been many requests from libraries to be a library of sanctuary? Do you get a lot of libraries um, applying? Uh, we've had several. Um, they come in different ways. They might come to us directly at nationally or they might come to the local group. Um, so there are some libraries that um, our Newcastle Library has recently put in an application um, and that's being um, picked up with uh, we're, we're just putting an appraisal team together for that over the next um, few weeks. Uh, Oldham Libraries, uh, all of the libraries there are working towards the Library Award. Uh, the whole, All of Greater Manchester Libraries are currently involved as well as libraries across the sort of West Midlands um, and, and, and uh, Southampton Library was awarded sort of last year. I think it has been a difficult year for libraries because they've been shut for so much of it. And um, the, the website and the resource pack was only launched last May, which of course was after lockdown. Um, and a similar question again, are there any health libraries of sanctuary based in NHS trusts or primary care? So a little bit more specific. I can't answer that question. I'm sure somebody in Silib could answer <laughs> that question. There must be libraries, mm -hmm. you know, these would be, um, it would be wonderful to receive an application from one of those libraries. I mean, one of our other streams of work is across health mm -hmm. and trying to share good practice, you know, in terms of ensuring um, good quality health care for people seeking sanctuary who have many, many barriers obviously. So um, that's just a couple of more questions. Um, the first is, um, 
what criteria do libraries need to meet to become a library of sanctuary? So just an overview of the key things. Oh, um, they're based on our award criteria. So obviously, you know, signing up to our share, shared vision of a culture of welcome and hospitality, you know, making that public commitment. So it would be um, uh, sharing that fact on their website. Uh, you know, maybe having a, this is, you know, um, they're, you know, welcoming, um, this is a library of sanctuary and, and or we're a welcoming library, you know, um, very visible publicly um, and celebrating that uh, through their social media and website, etc. Um, learning, I mean, it's, it is in those learn, embed, share criteria, really, you know, it's about learning and promoting understanding of the experience of people seeking sanctuary, but not just doing it themselves, but engaging directly with people seeking sanctuary so that they're learning directly. Um, having a nominated member of staff as a contact point for people seeking sanctuary. Um, a, a key thing, you know, is engaging people seeking sanctuary in, in their decision making. Um, and providing opportunities for people seeking sanctuary to connect with other people, you know, and, and other people locally and in the locality and, and with library members. So, you know, building those relationships of solidarity um, and, and being being prepared to, um, sh you know, shout about your achievements and your good practice. Um, there is a I won't name it, but there is a brilliant university that has been offering sanctuary scholarships for um, many years and they haven't applied to become a university of sanctuary because they don't want to shout about being a university of sanctuary. They're afraid of that backlash. And unfortunately, that for them, that is obviously an important criteria for us. We want people to celebrate being and 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 be proud of offering the welcoming environment not doing that behind closed doors um because you know that is the only way we can actually counter that hostile environment is by standing up and saying look you know most of us the majority of the people in the uk don't want pretty patels evil policy harming people we're actually standing up for the sanctuary um so uh, we appreciate that public libraries you know, won't and can't get polit political. Other organisations can be much more independently political in terms of advocacy and campaigning. But you have to be proud to be a library of sanctuary and say say that loud and clear on, on all your platforms, really. That's brilliant. Um, so the final question was, does the notion of libraries of sanctuary in the UK also include the provision of services to people in emergency situations due to natural disasters. I don't know if you want me to repeat that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think I get that. Um, the idea of sanctuary is sanctuary for all, you know, because if we aren't all feeling welcome, then it's very hard for any individual to feel welcome. So, of course, the, the notion does go wider. I was thinking, I was kind of half prepared for that question, you know, for migrants in general or newcomers in general, and most definitely, yes. And I think, um, it's not specific to our mission, but anybody in an emergency, are you thinking about flooding or, you know, people perhaps being um, uh, out of their homes because of flooding? You know, absolutely. A library of sanctuary would be a place to to reach out to those people, as would as a school of sanctuary would be opening up their doors and um, their halls, you know, for overnight accommodation in emergencies. And um, I think libraries are actually natural places of welcome. You know, so the idea of a library of sanctuary is actually thinking through all those marginalised groups and making sure that they um, have broken down any of those barriers, actually looked at what those barriers might be. Um, but yes, a sanctuary is a much broader concept, I think. And we can all do with sanctuary. One of our maxims, particularly to hardworking staff or hardworking volunteers who are burning out with their passion, is take sanctuary for yourself. Thank you so much, Colleen. And um, I don't know if Susie's internet is back. Are you able to talk, Susie? I think she's frozen. I think she may have frozen. 
Yeah, I think she might have. Um, well, I will just, well, maybe we'll, we're getting on a bit, so maybe we'll end it there. But, um, you know, thank you, for, you know, for sharing this. And it's been really interesting. I admit to not knowing very much about it until Amina um, mentioned it in our committee. And that's why we're so keen to have this conversation. But I'm definitely like for myself going away to look at the resource pack and I'm going to see if we can buy that book for our library at Sunderland um, and learn more. Oh, yes. Um, yes yeah, I'm. I'm uh, yeah, you don't know what you don't know, but now that you know it, you can't not do anything about it. So now we're going to uh, going to follow up on that from my perspective at Sunderland. Um, I hope everybody else found it useful, and I know that Susie has put in a um, a link to our feedback form. But like, I just want to urge everybody to check out the the we've put the link to the city of San the city of sanctuary website in our chat, and also. Um, we had a link to the resource pack, which uh, will be in the recording of the power, the presentation as well. And we'll put all of this stuff on our website when we put the recording up. So all of the links will be there. But, you know, after this, I'm glad that people have said in the chat that they find it useful. But I really want to encourage people to follow up on it and um, and read all of the stuff. And, you know, I, I definitely will. I hope that other people will as well. And just want to say thank you and congratulations to um, you know the multilingual library for for be, for getting that, um, it's it's, uh, it's a good thing, and well, I'm 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 really excited about it. I'm, I've been happy to learn about it, and I will definitely go further. So, Susie, are you back? I, I think you came back for a minute, but then you disappeared. So perhaps not. Um, so I I will end it there. And thanks again for for your presentation and for sharing your experience, Jola. 